Hey, I'm Brian Van. I'm Max Van. And today we're going to recap Moto America 2024 Super Sport Round 8 in Austin, Texas at Coda. Circuit of the Americas. Coda. Coda. Yeah. Okay, before we dive in and recap the weekend, got to thank all the people that got us there, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. All of the badass sportbikejacker.com customers throughout the, one. throughout the past 19 years of us being open. Precision 100%. track days, two-wheel dyno works, Spiegler brake lines, helmet house, showy helmets, CD boots, RST moto, Racer Gloves USA, uh, Vortex Racing, Driven Racing, REB Graphics. SBS brake pads. SBS brake pads, tech spec tank grips. I'm, I'm definitely forgetting some Detroit custom paint down in uh, down Detroit. Yeah, hundred awesome, percent. Our guy Brian Pfeiffer. Hot Bodies Racing, we're there, man. Yeah. Team Hammer for their support. K Tech Suspension for their support also. And Owens. And Owens too. Yeah, we've got a our bike right now. We're running a hybrid uh, suspension setup. Yeah. Got the K Tech through rod shock on the back. Yep. Owens in the front. And, and the Owens 30, 30 kit in the front. And uh, how's that bike handle, bro? Great. Well, you're well. It's awesome. So, Coda, Circuit of the Americas. I've been there for a few MotoGPs with my wife. It's a giant facility. It's a great place. Yeah. You know, when we go to the MotoGPs, it's arguably more fun because mom and I get to go hang out in 6th Street and get a little buzzed up and have a little fun. But race weekends are different. It's all work and very little play for dad but it's well worth it. So great facility, iconic, awesome to be there. How do you like the track? It's super cool. I mean, it's definitely too much for a motorcycle if I'm being brutally honest. What do you mean? It's a little overwhelming, you know, but the track's badass. It's got a little bit of everything. Define overwhelming. It's just, it got a lot of shit going on. It's got a lot of hard braking. It's got some fast straightaways. It's got some fast flowy corners. It's got some S's. It's got fucking a lot of everything. It's everything awesome. I heard sounded like fun and you call it overwhelming. It, it's, you must have had a shitty weekend. I had I had a good weekend. Did you really? I had a good weekend. It was but you were overwhelmed. It was fun riding there. Hmm. It's tricky. It's tricky to go to go fast at that track. After talking with Matthew Skoltz, thanks Matthew for the tips, and hopefully you win the championship at New Jersey. Um, well, PJ's not gonna like that, but P PJ's probably not gonna watch your video. I don't really care, anyways. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, yeah, you got to be really patient at the track. It's more so focusing on exits and not rushing the corners and. That's some things, you know, kind of learn the hard way, but at least we know now and for next year will be good. So let's talk about how you finished, man. Yeah. Um, two tenth place finishes. Yeah. That was probably my best weekend of the year. It wasn't my best finish of the year, um, but two tenth place finishes. Yeah, which is solid. Good. When you look at the level of competition in this class, right? It's like you're, it's, like fucking moto gp or something now you know this is super hard you know you, you got matt skoltz pj jacobson right jake oh our guy jake lewis jake we gotta lewis, give him the yeah, shout out yeah, there jake lewis won race one of the week jake lewis in a convincing manner one race one you know i've been riding with jake right since he was like 13 is when i met him down at barber motorsports park with another track day company, he would be down there with his dad, his mechanic, Trice. And the kid's always been fast and, you know, watching him, you know, go through the ranks over the years and, and then really back into it full time right now. He's doing a lot of riding this year and he's just had a great year. To watch him win that super sport race, that was pretty damn cool. That was cool. Yeah, he did a big stand up wheelie crossing the line. And then I think going into turn one on the cooldown lap, he, he smacked his stomach. Oh, a that's because Greg White talked shit on him. Yeah, yeah. What the hell, Greg? What's up with that? Yeah, Greg, what's up with that? I mean, you're not actually all that thin yourself, bro. And what Jake proved, Jake's yeah. not fat. Jake's a full size American male human being. Yeah, like six oh. foot three, six oh, foot yeah, four. Oh, yeah, he's super tall. He's and he's just thing, not. Dude. He's not, no. he's not skinny. He's like a wind sail on a motorcycle, but he's still really fast. He's really fast. Still really fast. Really smooth. Jake's one of the best racers out there, no mm -hmm. doubt. You know, just being it, 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 as tall as he is, is it a benefit? Probably not. How much of a negative is it? I don't know. He just won a super sport race at yeah. Coda in very convincing yeah. fashion. So yeah. that was awesome to see. There were some new players in the game. Yeah. Um, 
uh, what was the Fettuccine Linguini guy? What's his name? Uh, I think it was Filippo Linguini or <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name. You just but, messed that up but really bad. We both hammered it up. Filippo is his name. He's yep. a like fast he's, guy from yep. overseas. Yeah, he's a really fast rider. It's cool to see him out there. And uh, we had um, Alfonso L Linares or something yep. like that out there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's actually a friend um, racing down in Colombia. And then there was Martin Cardenas, which was really, really cool to have him. It's unfortunate that he didn't really end up racing, but... They got tangled up with him and Skoltz. He got tangled up. Yeah. It's part of racing, dude. So there were some new players in the game. You did really well. Yeah. Um, what You qualified in what? P14, which wasn't great, um, but it kind was of. super tight. It was really tight, but who cares? I mean, it's, it's just qualifying, so. During qualifying, we had an issue with the second tire. Yeah, in Q2. In it's Q2. Not, not, not really uh, an excuse, but. Um, came into the pits you know every time I think about putting on a new tire I think I'm gonna go faster just because of the tire in it that's really not it so I came into the pits a little early when the tire I had on was still good um this was in qualifying too that this probably is, had a good a Saturday three. morning probably three or four more laps and um we put the new tire on and it felt like it was an R7 you know the compound set an R7 set R7 on the tire same pressure which is a like uh, I'm gonna call it almost a medium medium tire it's uh it's pretty hard but I went out there and the thing, usually with Dunlops, they have a one to two, maybe three lap break in period. So of course you gotta get that silica gel, whatever the hell is on the tire. You know what I mean? It takes about a couple corners to scrub off on each side. Um, and then the tire's really hard for about a lap or two. And then it kind of sinks in. But with me, the tire never wore in. It just felt like a rock. Like I'd come out of the corner, it would just spin like crazy. There was no drop and sink, you know? It was almost like there was a suspension issue because the tire was fine. And I went out there for race one and I didn't have any problems. So no. it was clearly a tire. And it could be a lot of things. I mean. Yeah, could have been an old tire. I don't know, but who cares? That tire could have been in the truck for a while. Maybe that tire was at the very top of the stack in the truck and it got super hot. Maybe another team had had it mounted and had it on warmers and traded it in. I don't know. Is what it is. But for the first time ever, this is a, one of the many things I was super proud about, right, for your, the effort you put in over the weekend. He has never went faster in the race than he did in qualifying. Not to my knowledge. Not that I remember. I think at Road America, I did a little better. Um, if it was a little, it was... It was like a tenth, but yeah. I, I went like four or five, four, right around four tenths faster. Right around four tenths faster, and, and you got that done on Sunday in race yeah, two. I got that done on Sunday. So yeah. race, race one was good. Race one was good. I got I got passed in the last lap by Torn Collins. I passed Damn him, it. Cast him, passed him back, ran a little wide. He went underneath me. Smart, smart move by him. He got me. Um, race two was going on got a pretty shitty start um i think i was you know where i was kind of kind of qualified at 14th and um made a couple passes got up to 12th and you know as soon as i made those passes i put my head down for like four maybe five laps and i put a bunch of 15s in a row and i probably closed it was at least a five to six second gap to the riders in front of me which was uh stefano kayla um and, and then that filippo guy and torn they were all kind of going at it i caught up to them and then honestly, my, my, my right foot got a little hot and I started to lose feeling in it. I kind of got a little tired, if I'm being brutally honest, which is a little odd. You um, need to work out more, dude. I, I don't know what it was, dude, but riding that Kota is a, l a little bit different. I don't work my motor. Your lap times fell off a yeah, little bit at the end. They did. And they if did. there was any criticism, like we were kind of breaking it down with Josh after yeah. the race, if there was any criticism to give you on a very successful weekend. Yeah. You know, it was that, and we talked about it after. I mean, your little physical things. I don't want to hear that. You no, should still it's, push. it's not even physical. No, I, I made a, I made a little mistake. I tucked the front. And I kind of thought the tire was going off, so I was like, "Fuck it, can't really feel my right foot right now." You know, which doesn't matter because you have two feet. Use the other foot. Because I have two feet. Yeah, use um, the other foot. So, and then you know, I realized that I should have just got back to it because it's not like I almost crashed in every corner. It was just that one little mistake that I made. But I kind of settled in. I think I finished three and a half seconds back from the group in front of me, which was that group that I was uh, that I caught up to in those few laps. Um, it would have been nice to see it kind of get. Stefano Mesa is one of the best racers in the country, yeah. too, in my mind. I agree. You know, and like I, this is probably the first time during the race. I think during that race, I think you had a, a slightly better, fastest lap time. I think so. As Maybe compared to Stefano, not a lot of it, just a little bit. 
it would have been nice to see you keep running those 15s and and either stay with Stefano or, or try to get in there and duke it out with him a little bit because there's a lot to be learned from racing with somebody like that. Yeah, for sure. His race craft and, and ability is fucking tremendous. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you learned a lesson this time. You know, it's like one moment doesn't mean the tire's going off. No, not at all. One moment means you fuck something up in that corner, probably. Yeah. You know, if you get into the next corner, and you feel like it's clean and it does the same thing. Yeah. And the next corner, clean yeah. and it does the same thing. No. Now we're dealing with a tire yeah. issue. Yeah, I just I settled in with three laps to go, I guess. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't really want to fucking crash. I don't like crashing, if I'm being brutally honest. I'm sure all you riders agree with that. I um, thought you guys were fearless and didn't care if you crashed. Man, I ain't fearless, fearless shit. I'm afraid of the ocean, snakes, and horses, thanks to my girlfriend. Horses are more dangerous than motorcycles. 100%, yeah. You know, this I, thing can't think. No, no, this thing wants to buck you off, but if it's gonna buck you off, it's your fucking problem. It's your fault, yeah, horse. you did it. Like, you did something to make it do that. Yeah. It didn't go, I don't like the clone this dude's wearing. Oh. He's going for a ride. Yeah, it's kind of how it is, it's weird. Um, but yeah, Coda was cool. It's a ton of fun riding there. Uh, I, I know a lot next year, and I'm pretty content with how my year's been. You know, I'm, I'm only 14th in the championship right now, which is hard to believe with my Pretty solid performances at the past couple of rounds, but for a guy that probably has the, you know, my first sprint race of the year, uh, or first sprint race ever on a big bike was at Road Atlanta Race One with Moto America. It's so really pretty fun. I'm happy with that. And how much practice have you done this year? I have in total three days of riding. So one full track weekend at Barber, and let's say one day at <laughs> yeah. Little Talladega with Precision Track Days, which was a great event. Um, but other than that, that's all I got. So every time I show up on the racetrack, that's kind of how I'm learning. Um, but I'm having fun, selling some gloves, selling some RST yeah. suits, and some cool shit. So you're riding good, dude. Yeah. Like you're riding. Like several people have come up to me at the racetrack and and talked about your performance thus far this year. You know, and you're moving forward. You're steady, Eddie. You're doing smart things. Yeah. And you know, I've said this a million times. This is a found. This is a foundational process, mm -hmm. right? You know, you got to start by laying a solid foundation of fundamentals mm -hmm. and then you build upon that and you learn new lessons along yeah. the way. Right. And just adding blocks to the house. The lesson, probably the biggest lesson you learned this weekend was that when you had a moment, it's not the tire, the, the tires it's myself. Yeah, it's probably more you than it is the yep. tires. So now, you know, you're more aware of that. And the next time you find yourself in that situation, you can deal with it mm -hmm. because of, you know, what we did when when I took him riding. I didn't teach him how to ride on a racetrack. I let other people that I know really well that are great friends and great instructors do that. And it was a very fundamentally based process that they ingrained in him. And that's why he can go to every every one of these tracks. And Max yeah. goes out there and you're clean and competitive yeah. right, right out of the gate. You're not running at the front no. right now. Mm -hmm. But I think that you're doing all the things that as yeah. time goes on, you know, we got Jersey coming up. Of course. Part of that. And then we have one more complete yeah. year mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. After that, shit is more TBD. We'll see what decide see what, what we're gonna do. But you know, I think you're taking all the right steps to put yourself in a position yeah. where at some point, you know, you're gonna be able to stand on a box. And I mean you're earning some respect from some of these fast guys, like, you know, even Matt talking to you and, and being out there with you and giving you a couple of little pointers. I mean, if you were riding like an idiot, he's yeah. probably not even going to talk to you because he's just not going to have any respect for yeah. you. Yeah, it's cool. I, I learned a lot just doing the basic stuff, go, going to track days, kind of getting some seat time. I think the most I actually rode was when I first started riding motorcycles. I was right around 12 years old and I we started doing track days. Um, and I think I did like, what was it, maybe eight track weekends la that year. And that's probably the most laps I've ever spun. Yep. It was yeah. probably 2018, just learning how to ride. and Every session, there. every lap. Yeah, like I'm not a technical rider, if I'm being brutally honest. Like to be honest, when I'm out there, I don't know, like half the shit that I'm doing, I don't really know that I'm doing it. I just do it because that's the way you ride a motorcycle. I'm like pushing on the bars. Muscle, it becomes muscle memory at that yeah, point. Yeah, just to stand the bike up. Like I don't, I've never thought about that. To push the, on the bars to turn in on a motorcycle. I've never thought about that. I kind of. Because you were taught it, you did it. Yeah. And then you've, now you've, you've ridden for enough years now that yeah. you get to a point where to make the bike turn. And no. same for me, I don't think about that. You, the bike. It's just kind of turns it itself. Yeah, I don't fucking turn the because thing. muscle memory is just making yeah. that happen. Yeah, I would disagree with the, your statement that you're not a technical rider. Not like, very technical. I don't know what it comes down to. Watch you ride. I'm basic. 
Yeah, but you watch, you ride, you're very consistent. Yeah. You know, your place, your bike placement in the corners is very consistent. You're not one of those guys that's out there, hair on fire, blowing one corner after another. It's actually pretty rare during a weekend that you you blow a corner. At Kodai I did some of that in qualifying one. That's, <laughs> that's all I'll say. It's, it's, that's a tricky track, so. Yeah, it's yeah. more rare that you're doing that for mm -hmm. sure. Great weekend. I'm looking forward to... New Jersey. Looks like... Uh, the weather on the weekend is going to be good. Uh, Saturday, Sunday looks dry, but Thursday, Friday may look a little wet. It looks like 30% for both days all day. You know, so, uh, let me tell you, it always does one thing in New Jersey. Fucking rains. Every time. Until sucks. next time.